number 10 spot, we have the renovated floor. In one of the Reddit threads, a guy explained how once, when he was younger, he and his friend were at Portland University and the specific building they were in had only a few floors. At the time, the building was undergoing some new changes. The walls were newly painted, new rugs, and some of the floors were still undergoing these changes. They had a meeting on the third floor, so they got into the elevator and went to the third floor. They were not prepared for what they saw though. The entire floor was so dark, the door to their meeting room was locked, and there were no people in sight. They looked out the window to outside, and there was nobody around. It was completely deserted, even though five minutes prior, it was busy outside. They looked at the stairs, and everything was old, perhaps straight out of the 70s, and nothing had been renovated, unlike what they had previously seen, you know, five minutes ago. They went back into the elevator to the second floor, where there was so much hustle and bustle, and their teacher confirmed that their meeting was indeed on the third floor. They decided to take the stairs, which again, they saw were actually renovated, and when they got to the third floor, everything was the same except the floor had been renovated and there were tons of people. The boys are still convinced that they jumped through time and I'm with them. Definitely seems that way. In our number nine spot, we have the show. There is a thread where a woman's son explains an experience that she had that she can't explain. She takes the train to work every day and every day she sees a man that almost misses the train. One day he's running for the train and gets on in the last second and shoves her quite forcefully. The woman is shocked by this and gives him a dirty look as he never apologized. The man next to her asked her if she was alright. She said, yeah, and proceeded to turn around to find the man to give him a piece of her mind. But he wasn't there. He wasn't anywhere in sight. She turned to the man beside her and said, he got away quite quickly. And the man beside her looked confused. He had no idea what she was talking about. She explained to him that she was referring to the person that had just shoved her and that only seconds ago he asked her if she was alright. The man had no recollection of asking her this or seeing her being shoved. Either she stepped into another parallel universe or something's gone wrong with her mentally. Hopefully it was a parallel universe slip. In our number 8 spot we have the energy loop. This thread had me buzzing as some of the ideas presented truly can make you feel like a kid again, looking up into the stars and wondering, what the heck is life? What is it? <laughs> there is a thread where someone goes into a concept called eternal returns. A user stated, quote, the concept of eternal returns states that the entire universe as its whole will repeat and loop itself forever in the exact same identical way forever, from its start to its end, history literally repeats itself from the Big Bang to the universe's final collapse. The concept is apparently from Indian philosophy and can also be found thought about in ancient Egypt and eventually it was adapted by the Pythagoreans and the Stoics. The idea that the universe repeats itself would perhaps mean that then there are no parallel universes, but honestly it's very confusing and I'm unsure. It's definitely something I'm going to have to mull over as I drink my evening tea tonight. In our number 7 spot we have infinite realities. Another thread went deeper into the concept of infinite realities and one user in particular had me thinking that it's very possible that parallel universes exist if this were to be true. He said, we are all the same consciousness split into infinite independent pieces, experiencing every infinite slice of reality independently as every living thing in every dimension at the same time. When you screw someone over or wrong someone, you are actually going to have to experience the other side of it as well. Every killer has had to live the life of his victim, etc. Because we are all the same consciousness ultimately. Damn. I love this take on karma. As if it's just inevitable as opposed to a punishment. This definitely aligns with the concept also of yin and yang and makes the most sense to me. In our number 6 spot we have the glass of water. There is a reddit thread where a guy explains that he is very particular about his mornings. He does the same thing. He gets up, grabs a glass and fills it with water and then pours some cereal and watches Netflix in bed. He definitely gives me Sheldon vibes from the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> I bet you he has a seat that no one's allowed to sit in and I bet you no one can touch his food either other Otherwise, he won't eat it. On second thought, that's probably a good practice to have as we just got over a pandemic. Anyways, this was a regular morning. He had a sip of his water, put it on his nightstand, and started eating his breakfast in bed while watching Netflix. Anyways, he was eating away when he got thirsty, and
and went to have a sip of water when his cup was gone. He was very confused as he got up and went to the kitchen and found his cup in the cupboard. He believed that he slipped into another dimension where grabbing water in the morning isn't a part of his routine. And a lot of people seem to be here for it. Do you think he slipped into another dimension? Let us know in the comment section below. In our number five spot, we have the John Teeter thread. All right, if you clicked on this video, then I'm sure at this point you have heard all about John Teeter. John Teeter is a supposed time traveler from the year 2036 that came to the early 2000s for personal reasons, he said, and engaged in a blog thread online. People have debated his authenticity for many, many moons now with some predictions that seemingly have come true and some that did not. But one Reddit user commented something notable that I wanted to share. He said, please keep an open mind. John Teeter stated that traveling through time doesn't mean traveling linearly. But to travel, you must switch into another universe in which the time was set either in the past or future. John also mentioned that he could have already changed up the timeline just by being there and things would change either way. That would definitely explain a couple of the wars that he said would happen that haven't yet, like the Civil War of 2015. There definitely has been civil unrest and distrust in society so much recently that I wouldn't be surprised if that was a part of our time very soon, but you know, maybe just a little delayed. Hopefully not, you never know. <laughs> In our number four spot, we have the Macarena. Yes, the Macarena, that infamous 90s dance that almost everyone in the world knows that was born pre-2000. I can't speak for anyone after that. They have so many TikTok dances in their head that they may not have room for this one. A Reddit threat unveiled a very peculiar thing. Apparently, if you view the original music video for the Macarena, you would see that a few dance moves are missing and we're never there. The thread went deep into where the heck did these extra moves come from if they were never there? How did literally everyone from around the world learn some extra moves if the music video did not showcase them? This one is super freaky to me as I play back all the times I have done the Macarena at weddings and school dances and parties and it was always done with the extra arm movements. Where did they come from? Probably another universe. In our number three spot, we have the sweater. This Reddit user spoke about how she was getting ready one morning and grabbed her favorite blue sweater and put it on her dining room chair as she was grabbing a few of her things to take her dog for a walk. She went back to the chair to grab her sweater when it was gone. She felt you know, confused. She just had it and put it on her chair. Where is it? She walked around the house trying to find it. She went to the laundry room to see if she accidentally threw it in the laundry, nothing. She went to the washroom, the living room, she walked back into her room and nothing. The sweater was not there. She went to all of the rooms two more times and still nothing. The sweater just disappeared. She's convinced that it got sucked into another dimension or experienced a time slip. And honestly, I don't blame her. Either that or some ghosts are playing a trick on her. In our number two spot, we have the dimension thread. Okay, not going to lie, this thread, you know, really pulled me in. I had to read it slowly because the ideas presented in it are so hard to grasp as they are just not our current reality and it takes a minute to really understand the concept of there being other dimensions, you know, bigger than that. But what is explained is that there are in fact 10 dimensions in total and each one gets more trippier to understand. But through Googling this and learning about all 10 of the possible dimensions, you may see how it makes sense that parallel universes exist. One commenter said, I am starting to believe time really is an illusion and our past, present, and future exist at the same time, but we only experience it linearly. So it's like we can only be on one place on the timeline at any given moment, even though the rest exists elsewhere. Another reader commented, that's called experiencing this reality from a third dimensional perspective. Yeah, this convo definitely had me confused, but it sounds like it could make sense for our realities to exist at the same time. I definitely need to think this one through more, but very interesting. In our number one spot, we have the man from Torrid. Of course, there are so many threads about the infamous man from Torrid. There are also more people that have apparently popped up out of nowhere in this world, but the man from Torrid is the most popular story and 
and you know, my personal favorite. If you haven't heard this story before, essentially one day a man was traveling to Japan in July of 1954 and when he was going through customs in the Tokyo airport, the security wouldn't let him through as he had a passport from a country that did not exist. The man insisted that the country did exist and that it was called Torrid and it had existed for thousands of years. He pointed to the map where a country called Andorra exists now and insisted that his country is called Torrid but it is in the place where Andorra lies now. He was detained for a night in a hotel while the police investigated this case but when they arrived the next day to the man's hotel room, the man was gone. He had completely vanished. Some say he went through a time slip and some say that is probably just an old urban legend but as there are many stories like this that have popped up over the last while, a lot of people believe this story to be evidence of a parallel dimension. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have the story of Carol Chase McKelleny. One day in 2006, Carol was driving through San Bernardino, California on her way to Paris, California, where she was going to stay for a few days. On her travels, she saw a sign for Riverside, which was nearby, and she decided that since her family had roots there, maybe it was time to stop in for a visit. As she went into Riverside, she realized that everything looked different from how she remembered it and was unable to find her old house that she grew up in. She tried to go to the street that her grandmother used to live on, but that one was different too. And when she tried to visit her grandparents' graves at the cemetery, the whole place didn't even exist. Even the people who were living in the town gave Carol a bad feeling, and she didn't even want to get out of her car. She decided she would just be better off continuing on her trip and left Riverside. Carol didn't end up returning to Riverside until a few years later, after her dad had passed and she was attending the funeral. To Carol's surprise, when she went to Riverside this time, everything was as she remembered it from her childhood. Carol believes that day that she ended up in some sort of parallel universe form of Riverside and she even said that she felt like if she left her car that day she was going to get stuck there. In our number 9 spot we have this story from Peru. The Marcoasi forest in Peru has been called a doorway to another dimension for centuries because of all the stone figures that resemble human faces and religious figures and because of the amount of people who go missing and never get found. There was a group of friends who decided to enter the forest despite all of these stories and they ended up stumbling upon a cabin that appeared to have some sort of party going on inside. As the group went up to the cabin, they saw people inside but all of the people were in 17th century garb and nothing that was modern or similar to what the group of friends was wearing. One of the friends began to try and enter the cabin and was halfway in the door when the friends quickly pulled her back. After being pulled out, it was discovered that the half of her body that had entered the cabin was now paralyzed. If her body really did become paralyzed because it had entered another dimension, that would definitely explain all of those strange stone statues. In our number 8 spot we have the old story of the green children of Woolpit. In the 12th century, it is said that two children were discovered just outside of Woolpit, Great Britain, but what was so weird about them is that they had green skin. When the children were brought back into the city and given food and water, they refused to eat anything other than raw beans. Eventually, their green skin began to fade and turned into a more normal human color. One of the children passed away, but the girl continued to grow and eventually learned English. When she was finally able to communicate with those around her, she told the story of how her and her brother had come from a place that was in constant darkness called St. Martin's Land. Everyone from her town lived underground and everyone had the same green skin. The girl and her brother were wandering around one day when they came across a cave and they decided to enter. They kept walking and eventually came to Woolpit and when they turned around, the cave they had been in disappeared. Did this cave act as a portal to an alternate reality for these kids? If so, I don't ever want to end up where they come from because it does not sound nice. Guys, before I continue on in this list, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out.
out. In our number seven spot today, we have the story of James Richards. In 2009, James was walking his dog when he tripped and knocked his head, rendering him unconscious. When he woke up, he found himself beside some sort of machine he didn't recognize, and there was another man named Jonas who said he had just found James' body while he was on a work trip for the interdimensional travel company that he worked for. What? The two ended up striking up some sort of conversation, I guess like you would when someone just casually tells you that they travel through dimensions for work. They started chatting about what pop culture was like in each of their dimensions, and they came to discover that, of course, the Beatles existed in both of their dimensions. Jonas ended up explaining that in his dimension, the Beatles were all still alive and they had never actually broken up. Jonas gave James a cassette tape of the Beatles music from his dimension that certainly does not exist in ours. When James returned to our universe, he ended up uploading the tape to a website called The Beatles Never BrokeUp.com. In our number six spot, we have a story from Reddit that was posted by the user Too Hum Folk. One day, the writer was driving home from school and began trying to call their boyfriend using the hands-free feature. The phone didn't end up ringing even after five separate attempts, so they turned the phone off and then on again and tried one more time. This time, the boyfriend answered, but it didn't really sound like the person they knew and loved, and they also sounded like they were pretty freaked out. He said, Liz, is this you? Liz kept saying hello, but wasn't getting an answer, and panicked and hung up the phone. Liz tried calling again twice, but there was no ring again. Luckily, on the third try, another voice picked up the phone and asked, is this better? Liz then asked who this was, and the voice responded with something unintelligible, and then they hung up. Liz continued to call the boyfriend until he picked up the phone. Sounding significantly more like himself and not panicked at all, Liz asked who was picking up the phone earlier, and the boyfriend explained that no one had picked up the phone because he had never received any other calls. When Liz got home and checked the boyfriend's call log, they realized that only one call had gone through to his phone. Liz made sure that they were dialing the right number when they were calling, and it was the correct number every single time. Who had been answering the boyfriend's phone? At our number five spot and halfway mark, we have another Reddit post from Tiger King Quinton. The user explains that this story takes place when they were eight years old in Florida with their family and their friend's family for a two week vacation. The friend really wanted to go to Wet n Wild and begged for his parents to take them there, so they ended up going one day during the trip. The boy and his dad ended up going into the wave pool that day and were mainly staying in the shallow area. After a while, a larger wave comes their way and it takes the boy underneath the water. He realizes he can't feel the bottom anymore and begins to panic trying to break the surface of the water. When he reaches the top and gets his head out of the water, he realizes that he is no longer at wet and wild, but is in the middle of an ocean a couple hundred meters from an island. He doesn't know where or what this island is, but after a few seconds he begins to feel lightheaded and sinks back into the water. Luckily he then feels some hands under his arms and he realizes his dad is lifting him out of the water back at wet and wild, asking him if he's alright. Maybe this wave pool really did take this kid to an alternate dimension. In our number 4 spot we have a story coming from Tokyo in 1954. At the Haneda airport, a plane from Europe landed and dropped off its passengers. As the passengers made their way through customs, one man told the officials that he was just on a normal business trip that he made regularly. He spoke French as his first language, but could also speak Japanese and a few other languages. Officials then asked him where he was from, and his response is where things take a turn. He said he was from a place called Torrid, which was on the border between France and Spain. When officials told him that the place didn't exist, he gave them a passport that had been issued by this country that isn't real. This passport had also been stamped, validating all of the previous trips he had said he went on, including his previous trips to Japan. Officials called the company that he said he was meeting with, and the company said that they had never heard of him or his company before. They then called the hotel he said he had a reservation at, and the bank that was listed on his checkbook. The hotel said that there was no reservation for him, and the bank just didn't exist at all. Officials thought that maybe he was confused, so they showed him a map and pointed to the country of Andorra, asking him if this is what he meant. 
The man began to get upset, saying that Andorra didn't exist and that it had misplaced Torrid where he claimed to be from. Customs decided to detain the man and put him in a hotel room for the night while they decided what to do next. The next day when they went to collect the man, he had totally disappeared with all of his personal identification and documents. Police searched for this missing man, but he was never found. Maybe this man somehow accidentally found himself in a parallel universe separate from his own, and I just hope he was able to make it back to wherever he was from and return to his normal life. In our number 3 spot we have the story of a man named Jafar Vorin. Jafar was a strange man who just appeared in a village one day before he was picked up by authorities. The language he spoke was closest to German, but even then it wasn't quite the same. Jafar said he was from a place called Sakria and that he was searching for his brother who had been lost in a shipwreck. He couldn't point out where he was from, but was able to tell authorities some geographical information about where he had come from. He explained that his home had five separate compartments or continents called Sakria, Aflar, Aslar, and Uplar. He couldn't show anyone how he had arrived at the village and he had no idea how to get home, so he just ended up living out the rest of his life in Berlin. It's crazy to think that maybe he was a man from another dimension and he ended up just getting stuck here. I feel bad for him and I wish we could have helped him return home. In our number two spot we have the story of Pedro Ramirez. Pedro was driving from a place called Seville to his home in Alcala de Guadera on a November night in 1986. As he went around a curve in the road, he suddenly found himself on a six-lane highway, and as he continued to drive straight, he saw tall buildings, unidentified structures, and grass that was two feet tall growing alongside the road. These were all things that were out of the ordinary for that area. He continued driving, and suddenly Pedro heard a voice that told him he had been transferred to another country in a different hemisphere. Pedro didn't know what to do, so he kept driving driving for another hour before stopping on the side of the road to take a look around. After a short break he began driving again, only to come across a sign with three arrows pointing in different directions. One was labeled Malaga, the other was Sevilla, and the last was Alcabala. Pedro decided to take the Sevilla route and after driving down it for a while, he stopped again. When he pulled over and got out of the car, he stood there for a second, and then when he looked back to his left, he saw he was standing right outside of his home. He tried to go back to where he had been before, but couldn't find anything that he had seen before, including the sign with the three arrows. Who knows where Pedro was for that while, but I'm very glad that he ended up making it home safely. In our number one spot today, we have the story of Lorena Garcia. One morning in 2008, Lorena woke up in a life that was similar to the one she was living when she went to sleep, but certainly not the same. At first it was just small things like her bed sheets and her pajamas, but when she got to work, things began to escalate. Lorena realized that her office wasn't her office and that she worked in the same building, but in a completely different department. She had never even met her boss before, so she knew that this couldn't have been a moment where she just got lost or confused. When she returned home after work that day, she was met by her ex-boyfriend, only to find out that he was apparently her current boyfriend. She tried to find the person that she had been dating for months but he didn't seem to exist in this new life and world that she found herself in. Lorena began to seek psychiatric help because she was fearing that she was having some sort of nervous breakdown, but all tests revealed that she seemed to be of sound body and mind. The strange occurrences continued when Lorena asked her family how her sister was doing. Lorena knew that her sister had recently had shoulder surgery and wanted to check in, but when she asked her family, they were baffled by her claims and insisted that there was no surgery that had taken place on anyone in the family. Lorena couldn't find any answers to her situation and was having no luck with a medical explanation either. She is convinced that she went to sleep one night and woke up in a parallel universe that was altered slightly by small decisions that she had made. Honestly, after all of these stories, I kind of believe Lorena too. Starting off this countdown, we have The Wrong Turn. So this is a real story reported by four university students. Their names were never disclosed to protect their identity. But apparently in May of 1972, they were on their way back from a Utah rodeo and headed to their dorm. On their way back, they decided to take a shortcut. 
but that was their first mistake. While traveling along this unknown road, the path suddenly turned into gravel, and then all of a sudden they hit a dead end. So they had to travel all the way back down the road that they just came. However, while doing so, they noticed that the path had changed. It didn't look like the same original path that they originally took. All of a sudden, they saw something glowing in the distance. They drove towards it and found themselves at a weird building with a neon sign. The neon sign was in a language that none of them recognized. When they pulled towards the building for help, these weird tall men came out towards them. They seemed confused and angry. Juan got close to the car and one of the girls screamed. Tall man didn't appear to be human, so they sped out of there. While driving away, they saw weird egg-shaped vehicles following them. They sped until the vehicles stopped following them. Finally, they somehow reached the road that they were originally on. To this day, they believe that they somehow traveled to another universe through that road. Isn't that creepy? Hit that thumbs up button if you agree. In our ninth spot, we have the lift ride and the disappearing store. Just recently, Reddit user NoBookkeeper3991 decided to take a lift to go to the dollar store. It wasn't too far from his place, and it wasn't complicated to get to. A couple minutes go by and he should have reached the store by now, but they couldn't find it. The store just randomly wasn't there anymore. In fact, the whole street looked different. Both the dude and the lift driver started to panic. Everything changed in front of them in a flash. It was super weird. So yeah, the guy didn't end up going to the dollar store that day. Apparently, they rode into a parallel universe or something. And of course, days later, the missing dollar store magically reappeared again. Moving on at number eight, we have the disappearing professor. A well-known faculty member at the University of the Andes disappeared on campus without a trace. According to multiple witnesses, they saw the professor leave one of the university's buildings cross the parking lot and get into his car. Many people saw this happen. In fact, people were calling at him and waving to him as he got into his car, but his car sat there unmoving for a while. A couple of students actually approached the car to see what was going on and found the car empty. The professor was nowhere to be found. To this day, the professor has never returned. It's assumed that when he got into his car, he was transported to a different universe. Moving on at number seven, we have the Green Children of Woolpit. Back in the 13th century, two weird children randomly appeared in the village of Woolpit in England. The two were brother and sister and had weird greenish colored skin. To make things weirder, they spoke a language no one heard of, and they were dressed in weird clothing. They also didn't want to eat anything except raw beans. Eventually, they were taken in, but sadly, the boy became sick and passed away. The girl, on the other hand, started to like normal food and started to lose the green color in her skin. After learning to speak English, she said that her and her brother were from a place where people had green skin and the sun didn't shine bright. They were herding their dad's cattle when all of a sudden they heard a loud noise. Bam! They were in a new place. Now the girl ended up growing up and marrying a man and starting a whole new life there but it seems like the two traveled there from another dimension. Coming in at number six, we have the campsite. A couple of years ago, a woman and her friends were out camping when they heard music coming from the forest. They followed the sound thinking that they were alone and came across a small stone cabin. The weirdest part? When they approached the cabin, they saw people dressed in 17th century fashion. One of the friends was fascinated and went over to the cabin to try and go inside. As she was about to enter, one of her friends pulled her away. As that happened, half of her body became paralyzed, the half that entered the cabin. It's believed that she partially entered another dimension and that threw off her nervous system, which resulted in half of her body becoming paralyzed. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the deaths. This story is pretty intense, so buckle your seatbelts. But basically, one night this woman had a dream about someone she knew dying. Three days later, that dream came true and the person passed away. This has happened to her a number of times. She falls asleep, has a dream that someone dies, and in exactly three days, that dream comes true and that person passes away. I mean, that sounds like a horror movie plot, like if you agree. Anyways, this has happened to two of her colleagues, three of her grandparents, her great grandfather, her friend's grandfather, two school teachers, three of her friends, and a random lady she met for five minutes one day at work. So, 
maybe don't become friends with her because then she'll have a dream about you and then you'll die. I'm just kidding. But some people believe that she's actually hopping from different universes. In one universe, the person has already passed away. When she jumps back to her current universe, the person isn't dead yet. And that's what triggers these dreams. They're just memories from other universes that she has traveled to. In our fourth spot, we have the different family home. Back in the day, a woman named Carol Chase McKelleny decided to visit her old family town and area. But when she was driving down her old street, she couldn't find the old house that she grew up in. In fact, all the houses on the street look completely different. She then decided to drive to the street where her grandmother used to live on. But when she got there, she found that the street was completely different as well. She then was driving through the town noticing that almost everything was changed. Like the cemetery where her parents were buried wasn't there anymore. Or a strip of restaurants and hotels was now just a graffiti covered area. She started feeling very uncomfortable and drove off. A few years later, Carol's father died and they went back to the cemetery to bury him with his parents. Surprisingly, the cemetery magically reappeared and everything about the town was back to normal. So she believes that during her other trip, she managed to visit her old town from a different dimension. In our third spot, we have the birth certificate. Just recently, Reddit user Professional Echo 348 went to get a new birth certificate. They were at town hall when they saw that their mother's middle name was not right. It was written as Victoria, but her real middle name was Virginia. So she asked the clerk what was up with it. Even her last birth certificate had her mom's middle name as Virginia. Sadly, her mom passed away 17 years ago, so she couldn't just phone up her mom and ask her what was up. Plus, she even named her daughter's middle name after her mom's middle name. So she decided to dig into this some more. She was going through old files when she saw that her mother was once married to a man named Pierce which again was wrong. His name was actually Pierre, not Pierce. So sometime in her life, she switched universes. One where her mother's middle name was Victoria and her stepfather's name was Pierce. Coming in at number two, we have the different girlfriend. One day, a guy woke up only to find that he had been sleeping next to some random girl. He freaked out and the girl, whose name was Laura, was all like, WTF, we've been dating for a couple of years now. How don't you remember? Stop fooling around, this isn't funny. Sure enough, his apartment was filled with framed photos of them together. What's weird is that that wasn't his girlfriend. He was dating a girl named Maria, not Laura. So apparently he went to bed with Maria and woke up beside a new girlfriend, Laura. So somehow he managed to switch universes in his sleep. That is insane. And does that count as cheating? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> and in our number one spot, we have Lorena Garcia. Lorena Garcia lived a pretty mundane life until one day everything changed forever. Her life literally got flipped upside down. So she woke up one day and noticed her bed sheets were different than normal. She kind of just ignored it and went on with her day. But as she made her way to work, she noticed little things were off. Again, she ignored it as she arrived at work. But when she got to her department, she realized it wasn't her department. She thought that she was on the wrong floor, but she wasn't. She had worked there for the last 20 years, but today she worked in a different department. She even looked herself up on her works database. She worked at the same company, but it said she worked at a different department. Then things continued to get weird. Her former boyfriend disappeared without a trace. There was no sign of him anywhere. There was not even a sign that the two had even dated. In fact, she hired someone to see what happened to him. Turns out he never existed, at least not in this universe. Her current boyfriend was someone completely different. So somehow when Lorena went to bed, she managed to travel to another universe. Isn't that crazy? Like imagine waking up and having a completely new job and partner. I would freak out and probably go insane. All right, coming in at number 10, we have the simulation hypothesis slash the matrix theory. It seems that our mate Elon Musk believes that we could be living in a simulated universe. Of course he does. He said that there is a billion to one chance that we are living in a base reality. A billion to one, really? Now the theory seems to suggest that actually we're living in a computer simulation just like in the matrix. Word on the street at the New Yorker is that actually right now there are two tech billionaires secretly engaged 
engaging scientists to work on breaking us out of the simulation as we speak. So, who is running this simulation? Apparently, it is a post human civilization. The long and short of the majority of the theories is that computers have already taken over and they're keeping us living in the simulation out of the way. Why isn't it a perfect utopia? Well, that just wouldn't be believable, would it? Or would it? I don't know, where's the evidence here? Well, amongst other slightly crazy suggestions, some say that the universe is a simulation because it seems to behave mathematically and is broken up into pieces, subatomic particles like a pixelated video game. I don't know, I'm not I'm not so sure. Coming in at number 9, I do believe in this, we have deja vu. What is deja vu? Is it a glitch in the matrix like Morpheus claimed or is it a lived moment from our parallel lives or is it some other kind of brain phenomenon that we just don't know too much about yet? According to Dr. Michu Kaku, an American futurist, deja vu occurs as a result of a person's ability to flip between universes. Others believe it's because we're vibrating in unison with the frequency of another universe that's parallel with our own. Mind melt. I actually really enjoy Dr. Kaku's Twitter. He posts thought provoking science riddles, plus, his profile picture is golden. Coming in at number 8, we have the Large Hadron Collider is a time machine. Like, is it? The Large Hadron Collider is a 17 mile long super machine that smashes particles together at nearing light speed. Now, the machine is based in Switzerland and there has been a lot of suspicion and speculation about it. Some people think it is possible for the machine to create microscopic black holes. Others say it makes time travel possible. There is an absolutely wild theory out there that an experiment at the Large Hadron Collider caused an Iber World Airbus A330300 to land 5,500 miles away from its intended location and it caused a power outage across South America. An article on the website Freedom Fighter Times claimed the power released from the LHC was so strong that it sent a time warp across the planet. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm here for that, also lol at the title of their publication, but others do suggest that the LHC can create conditions that allow matter and radiation to travel backwards and forwards in time. A lot of credible science articles have written of the possibility of creating a wormhole. Now this invites all kinds of drama via the grandfather paradox. If you travel back in time and kill your grandfather, does that mean that in the future you don't exist? Or does it create a parallel universe of alternative outcomes? Coming into number 7, we have what is at the end of a black hole. Recently we got our first ever picture of a black hole. Our knowledge on black holes is still a little sketchy. We only have what we've observed and what we have observed has been pretty damn far away. We know that black holes are very dense and that they exhibit such strong gravitational pulls on all things that nothing can escape their draws, not even the fastest moving particles we know, light. What happens to the particles once they're drawn inside the black hole? Well, we don't actually know. One theory is that the black hole is a portal to a different part of space. It's a parallel universe if you will. Now towards the end of his life, the late great Stephen Hawking was actually working on a theory of multiverses that included black holes. He alluded to the possibility of a black hole spilling its matter out into a separate place in space time, a new universe maybe. He said the hole would need to be large and if it was rotating, it might be a passage to another universe. He did say though if we travelled through we probably couldn't come back to our own, so I'm not sure if I'd want to go. Mm. Coming into number 6, we have every outcome slash the cat theory. So let me tell you about Schrodinger's cat. This is a thought experiment and paradox that could imply multiple outcomes. So the experiment is thus. If you place a cat and something that could kill the cat in a box and you seal it, you would not know if the cat was alive or dead until you open the box. So until the box is opened, the cat in a sense is both alive and dead. Are you with me? You might not be when I say the next sentence but let's just say it anyway. So electrons, little subatomic particles found in all atoms can spin both forwards and backwards, but they can't spin in each direction at the same time. They choose an outcome. So the cat could both be alive and dead, or actually, maybe it's both. According to the parallel universe theories of Everett and Davis, the act of observation makes a universe diverge and both universes can exist. There's one where the cat's alive and one where the cat's dead. They both come into existence. Every decision or situation could create a different outcome. It creates a diversion in the current universe, making for more parallel universes. Universe I? Does it make sense? I guess the mind kind of boggles, but let me give you an example. There could be a universe out there 
where I didn't move to Canada, and obviously the world that I'm living in where I did. Obviously, for me, the difference in those two outcomes would have been very, very different, but then perhaps there's a world in which I decided to wear pink today and not yellow, which would still be different, but maybe less dramatically so. Or so I think. Who knows? Coming into number five, we have the interaction. Michael Hall authored a paper on quantum theory, which includes the concept of every outcome. The cat both exists and doesn't exist, we just talked about this. Hall and a team from the Griffith University in Australia not only believe in the multiverse, but they believe that it interacts with our reality. They believe that infinite multiple worlds overlap and occupy the same region of space and time simultaneously. They think that the other worlds have subtle influences on our own. For example, strange occurrences, miracles according to the interaction theory, are as a result of the parallel universes. Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought that actually your reflection didn't quite match up? Is it the multiverse? Coming in at number 4 we have the Mandela effect. This is classic parallel universe theory and honestly this one does freak me out the most because I guess we've all had one of those moments of thinking, damn I swear that that wasn't the way I remembered it. So let me explain. The Mandela effect is the name given to multiple shared but factually wrong memories. There are a bunch of people out there that remember freedom fighter and former president of South Africa Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 1980s, except he didn't, he died in 2013. Similarly, some people staunchly swear that the Bernstein Bears were spelt with an E and not an A, and honestly, I thought that the Looney Tunes were the Looney Tunes until I watched a video about the Mandela Effect last year and I was really, really, really confused because tunes doesn't even make any sense, does it? They're cartoons, why? Other people also swear that sex in the city was sex in the city, but it wasn't, unless you were living in the universe that it was. So yeah, the theory goes that you were right, you're just from a parallel universe where those subtle differences were in effect. I suppose this could also feed into the interaction theory. Coming into number three, we have the bruises and cold spots of the universe. Stephen Feeney of University College in London announced that he had discovered patterns of radiation background left over from the Big Bang that seemed to suggest that our universe bumped into none other than four other universes at some point in its lifespan and is left bruised. Four. Bruised. Ah. Similarly, astronomers have found so called cold areas of the universe. Now, these CMB cold spots are areas of the observable universe that we have interpreted in microwaves. Now, they seem to be unusually, well, cold. Many people call one particular area the Great Void. Now it seems that this area of space time contains 10,000 less galaxies than other areas of a similar size in space that have been studied. A lot of people, including scientists from the University of Durham, believe this to be evidence of a parallel universe that is smashed into ours, or are they overlapping? Is this, once again, the great interaction that we talked about? Coming in at number two, we have dreams and the unconscious. Some people think that dreams and the time spent unconscious allows us to access a parallel universe. This is why we dream in 3D. Again, this is why dreams sometimes don't always make sense, because not every universe may have the same laws of physics that we do. This is why we often dream of people that are no longer in our lives that we haven't seen for years, because perhaps in a parallel universe they're still around you, or so the theory goes. Now this theory seems to be held as a belief by some First Nations tribes, and I don't know, maybe there is something to it. Building on from this, at number one we have coma stories. So this actually does get pretty crazy. Sleep is one thing, but extended periods of sleep or unconsciousness allow for people to access the parallel universe for a longer period of time, maybe. There was a really, really sad story posted on Reddit by Tempt to Sassoon seven years ago. Now they were involved in an accident and they were unconscious for a while, but during that period of unconsciousness, they lived 10 years of a different life. Now in the story they say that he met a woman, he loved the woman, they ended up getting married, they had two kids and they were happy. They were living an almost perfect life. But one day, he noticed that something was wrong with the lamp in his living room. It was kind of melting and contorting in some way. It was after three days of staring at the lamp and many worried conversations with his wife that actually he came to the realization that the lamp wasn't real. It started to invert and take up his entire perspective until all he was aware of was red hot pain. Now he awoke from his period of unconsciousness and discovered that the 10 years that he'd spent with his wife and children simply weren't real. He dreamed it all up somehow. He said he spent the next three years of his life in a state of severe depression, grieving the loss of a wife and child that 
actually just weren't real. He thought he was going insane. He said, I've had many personal messages describing similar experiences and three posters stating such experiences are impossible. I'd say that there needs to be more research done into brain function. Pre med students don't assume you know everything. Honestly, I don't know what it was about that story, but it really got to me. It was kind of horrifying and creepy. But the young man, did he simply awake in a parallel universe? This is just one story of many. I've read a lot of coma stories like this where people think that they've lived other lives. I don't know, has anyone seen the TV show The OA? For example, they talk about that a lot. Is it a sign of a parallel universe? Honestly, I feel a bit creeped out. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have cosmic inflation. The first half of this list is going to be some scientific explanations for parallel universes, but don't worry, the science won't get that complicated because then I wouldn't be able to understand it either. <laughs> first, let's start off by talking about the theory of eternal inflation. This is the idea that ever since the Big Bang, the universe has been rapidly expanding or inflating, and different parts of the universe have been inflating at different rates. This means that there are some sections of the universe that haven't really connected up with the rest, yet creating a sort of bubble universe. While our own universe has inflated enough to breed galaxies and stars and, and physics and science and whatever else, these other bubble universes are still in the process of creation. They have the potential to be the exact same to ours, or completely different from ours. Or maybe there is a you in one bubble universe that didn't get that bad haircut that you still really regret. One time, my mom cut my hair like Marilyn Monroe. It was brutal. <laughs> Coming up in our number nine spot, we have mathematical constants. Similar to that theory is the fact that everything in our known universe can be explained with mathematical equations. Think the Pythagorean theorem. Scientists know that the structure of our universe can be broken down into our mathematical structure. Math, that is, as they call it, without human baggage. They believe that because of this, it is entirely possible to hypothesize that there are other universes out there that are based around different mathematical structures, each universe having their own laws and rules based off of the structure. So infinite mathematical structures means infinite universes, some being just slightly different and some being totally, completely different. Coming up in our number eight spot, we have backwards universe. Two years ago, in in 2020, NASA discovered what they believe is evidence of a parallel universe, one that is more than a little bit different to ours. Their team called Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or ANITA, had been working on an experiment in, of course, Antarctica for a few years. A so-called cosmic ray detection experiment reportedly found particles that seemed to come from another universe, one that was also created when the Big Bang took place. While this evidence alone is pretty astounding, they also discovered that the particles appeared to be moving in reverse, leading them to believe that they had found evidence of a parallel universe where time moves backwards. While parallel universes are often just the work of science fiction and movies, we may be closer to finding the truth of the situation than we originally thought. In our number seven spot today, we have observable universe. Now let's talk about what scientists believe about the shape of space. In your head, maybe you imagine a big sphere or even some sort of donut, but most likely it's actually flat. And it stretches out infinitely, like forever, never ending. And if it goes on forever, then at some point it has to start repeating because there is a finite number of ways that particles can be arranged within space and time. So if you looked far enough, you would eventually find another version of you, maybe wearing a different shirt or eating something different for breakfast. Maybe a version of you that didn't watch this far in the video, but hey, we like this version of you better anyways. <laughs> Unfortunately, it would be pretty hard to actually see this far down the universe because our observable universe only extends 13.7 billion light years. This being the amount of time light has had to travel since the Big Bang. So you can consider the space beyond our observable universe to be its own sort of separate universe, one that we just can't see yet and probably won't for a long time, if ever. In our number six spot, we have time travel. Think about time travel for a second. Maybe you thought of Back to the Future. The concept of this movie is that if you go back in time and change one small thing, it can completely alter the future. Some scientists believe that time travel is a definite possibility in our future. So if it is, why haven't we seen anybody come back yet? 
And have they been screwing around and messing things up? Well, it's theorized that due to the way they would alter the universe, when time travelers go back in time, they actually create their own separate universe where things change. A parallel universe that works to include them in it. That would explain why we have never seen any real evidence of time travelers coming back to our current time or even any point in the past because they did not travel back in time in our universe but instead to their own unique one. Am I melting your brain yet? Let's move on to some simpler stuff. In our number five spot we have different life. For the second half of our list, we are going to be stepping away from science and taking a look at some people's stories of their experiences with glitches in the matrix that may lend evidence to there being parallel or multiple universes. One day, a man was in his house when he became overcome with the urge to go outside and stand on his lawn. For a moment, he said he had the clearest feeling ever before he felt a slight wobble and everything began feeling slightly distorted. When it was over and he turned to go back inside, he saw his car in the driveway, the same make and model, but a different colored car. But that wasn't the only thing that was different. When he saw his wife, he said that she definitely looked like his wife, but he just had this feeling that she was different. He also started having memories that weren't his and seeing buildings that, you know, there was no way he could have never noticed in his time living there. Entire departments from his work no longer existing. Is it possible this man jumped to a parallel universe where his life was only slightly different? Maybe. In our number four spot, we have wrong memory. This one is a story of a false memory, seeming like an intense version of the Mandela effect. The Mandela effect being when a large group of people all share a false memory of something, which we mentioned in detail on the previous list. This person says that they vividly remember someone they know dying in a car accident, texting and driving and going off an exit ramp that was still under construction. They remember themselves and their family and friends attending the funeral and everyone in their small town talking about it for weeks. Skip to 10 years later, even the person's fiance knew about it and knew the person's name because of how many times they had told the story. One day their fiance is looking at their sister's Facebook page and says, hey, isn't that the girl who died? The person came over to look and it turns out that it was. Apparently also no one in the town after this incident had any memory of the car accident or the funeral that took place afterwards. So did this person potentially have a memory from a parallel universe where the accident had taken place? It's possible. Coming up in our number three spot, we have disembodied voice. People who believe strongly in multiverses and parallel universes usually believe that there are some places and occasions where the gaps between our universes are thinner and it is easier for things to cross over or for the universes to communicate with each other. This story seems like one of those moments where the barrier was thin. When this person was around the age of 10, they were going to the beach with their aunt and friends when they were divided between two different cars. One of the cars didn't know the directions, so they were following behind the other car. When Suddenly, it took a sharp turn and they had to follow and do the same, going around a very sharp bend. Suddenly, they all heard a very loud, clear voice in the car saying, sharp bend, hmm? The driver of the car hit the brakes as they all looked at each other confused, confirming there was no one else in the car that had said that. There wasn't even anyone close by outside the car who could have said it. So maybe it was someone managing to speak through the thin barrier between the universes? Or was it a ghost? You decide. In our number two spot, we have the motorcycle crash. Sometimes people experience situations where the impossible seems to happen and maybe it is impossible, but only in our current universe. This person told their story of a death defying crash. Six years ago, they were riding through town on a motorcycle going about 45 miles per hour. Suddenly a woman who hadn't seen them turned left out in front of them. And despite the short amount of time, they remembered thinking about their options, whether they should go over or under the car. They laid the bike down and slid underneath the car diagonally. They slid across the pavement, no helmet, no jacket, just jeans and a hoodie. They slid about 80 feet before they stopped and were then able to stand up. No injuries, except a hole in their sweater, their bike having been completely mangled and torn apart. 
They knew that there was no way that they should have survived the crash, but somehow they did. A potential glitch in the matrix of the universe? Possibly. In our number one spot, we have takeout. Have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? Me either. <laughs> the idea that if you put a cat inside a box with a bottle of poison, the cat is in a state of being both living and dead until you open the box and find out. Well, it turns out that you know the food you ordered last night, your takeout, is also in a state of being your order and not your order until you open it up and find out. A man and his friend went to a Chinese restaurant where they ordered a chicken dinner and a shrimp dinner. When they received their boxes and opened them both, they realized that they had received two shrimp dinners. No big deal, just a mix up. So they close the boxes and get ready to go ask for a replacement. But before they do, the friend opens the first box again and instead of the shrimp dinner they had clearly seen before, it was now a chicken dinner, what they had originally ordered. They knew what they had both clearly seen. Was it possible that for a few seconds they had received their lunch from a parallel universe where they had ordered something else? Maybe. Number 10, the London Hammer. Many times in history, people have found objects that they think could be evidence of a parallel universe intersecting with our own. Those thoughts were raised again when in 1936, a hammer was found in London, Texas. While on a walk, a couple found a hammer that looked like ones that had been used in the late 1800s. So cool, they found an old hammer. Well, there's actually much more to it. The hammer had not rusted at all and still hasn't since it's been found, and it was also found encased in rock that dated back to the Cretaceous period. For those of you who don't know, that's around 100 million years ago. This is obviously weird because most people agree that humans only started popping up around 200,000 years ago. So how could this hammer have come to exist? Some people believe that it's the remnant of a parallel universe where humans developed long before they did on our Earth, or that it had potentially traveled back in time. If you live in Texas and want to check out this infamous hammer for yourself, you can find it at Carl Bowes Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. Number 9. Black Holes the existence of black holes is one of the greatest yet unexplained wonders of our universe, the first picture of a black hole only having been taken back in 2019. So how are they evidence of parallel universes? Well, let's get into some science here. Black holes are so hard to study because everything we've sent out there to try and get information is never seen again, people assuming that it's destroyed upon entering the hole. But Stephen Hawking said that whatever enters a black hole does come out, but it comes out in another universe. Because of the law of conservation of mass, even if something is destroyed, evidence of its presence would still be able to be seen. They would be visible in hair-like images that trace its path into the black hole. But Stephen Hawking noticed that evidence showed these hairs were not present, meaning the item has completely disappeared from our universe. And I'm really hoping this is making sense. Stephen Hawking says that this is good evidence that they have been transported to another universe, saying, Black holes are not the eternal prisons that we once thought. Number 8. Cloud City In October of 2015, Chinese citizens were shocked by what appeared to be a floating city within the sky. Multiple people taking photos and videos of the cityscape that seemed to loom above them within the clouds. The shape was far too specific to brush it off as being anything man-made, and looked to clearly be a cloud city. People were left wondering what it could be, and theories popped up of parallel universes or even even secret holographic technology. There was no time to answer these questions or speculate if it had even happened at all as the exact same thing took place again in China in March of the following year. More photos and videos popping up again of the incident. Many people believe that this supposed city in the sky is evidence of another universe crossing over into our own. Feel free to take a look at the pictures for yourself and make your own decision. Number 7. Deja Vu Have you ever been walking down the street and gotten the sudden feeling like you'd done that before even though you haven't? This is a phenomenon that is known as deja vu or already seen. As of yet, there is no real scientific explanation for why people all over the world experience these feelings. And there are theories that range from memory problems to glitches in the matrix. People who believe that deja vu is evidence of parallel universes describe it like this. Think of a radio where you can only hear one frequency at a time. The parallel universes beside us are at different frequencies, however it's possible that 
that for one small moment, the universes might vibrate at the same frequency and become in sync. Since parallel universes are all supposedly just slightly different, when these in sync moments happen and you believe that you've already had this conversation before, it's possible that you feel that way because you did, just in a parallel universe. Number six, the double slit experiment. Okay, this one is very sciencey, so bear with me. The double slit experiment was performed in the 1920s and seemed to offer convincing evidence of potential multiple parallel realities. The theory proposes that if tennis balls were fired at a wall through a single slit, then the marks on the wall would line up with the slit. So if you created two slits, it would create two lines on the wall. And if you fired waves through the wall, they would go through the splits, but still continue to spread out and leave multiple lines on the wall. And electrons should theoretically act in the same way that tennis balls do, but they didn't. They also made multiple lines as though they had been interacting with each other in the way that the waves did. But even when fired one at a time, it still made two sets of waves. For this to happen, it would mean that each electron somehow managed to travel through both slits. When they tried to film the electrons, they instead went back to just forming two lines like tennis balls. So this suggests that while parallel universes may be interacting with our own, we just don't have the technology to see it. Number five, the blue rock. All right, after that, let's go to something way more simple. In fact, let's go to something as simple as a rock. In 1990 in Sierra Leone, West Africa, an archeologist found a puzzling bright blue stone. When it was sent for studies, it was found that it was not similar to anything that could be found on Earth. And it was determined that it was not from this planet at all. One person who once held the stone said, it was perplexing and I had no idea what I was looking at. And I had no point of reference to compare it to anything else I had previously seen or handled before. Parts of this stone have come into the possession of many collectors over the years, and it is incredibly highly valued, likely because many people believe that similarly to the London Hammer, this is an artifact that has traveled to our own Earth from a parallel universe. Number four, the Mandela Effect. The term the Mandela Effect first came around in 2009, when a woman named Fiona realized that she and many others shared a false memory of Nelson Mandela having died in prison, when in reality he was still alive. She created a website to explain her observance of this phenomenon, shocked by just how many people all over the globe could possibly share this false memory. Over the years, many people have come together to share different examples of this Mandela effect. Some of the most famous ones being the spelling of the Bernstein Bears title, Darth Vader saying, Luke, I am your father, instead of, no, I am your father, and Curious George having a tail. Many people believe that a possible explanation for this is that the false memories are correct, but they're correct in a parallel universe, the memories bleeding over into our own world, as how else could so many people share this same fake memory? Number three, the cold spot. All right, back to science once again. When the Big Bang created our universe, the wavelengths of light expanded, changing the color and temperature of the universe to what we now perceive as black, creating the cosmic microwave background which maps the creation of our universe according to the Big Bang. While scientists were studying this background, they discovered what they refer to as the cold spot, being the size of 1.8 billion light years. While also being colder, it apparently also contains 20% less matter than it should. So how could they possibly explain the existence of this cold spot and why it is the way that it is? Well, experts believe that this is evidence of a parallel universe having crashed into ours through quantum entanglement, impact forcing energy out of the area and leaving behind the cold spot. Number two, the Hadron Collider. Researchers at the Super Collider in Switzerland started researching in 2015, hoping to find evidence of alternate universes. They have done various different tests trying to find these parallel universes that would not exist in the visible three dimensions of our own universe, but instead be made up of dimensions that we cannot perceive. One scientist theorized that the Hadron Collider could reveal particles that could only exist in these other dimensions, and being able to see them would give us almost undeniable evidence of the existence of parallel universes in line with our own. She said that these particles would have the exact same properties of particles in our own universe, but would have greater mass. All of this is still theoretical right now, but plenty of theoretical things from the past have been discovered and made reality, so it may not be long. Number one, the Tower Ed Traveler. In 1954, a European plane landed in Tokyo. On the plane was a man who spoke several different languages, and he told the people there that he was visiting on business. He then 
and gave them his passport which said that he was coming from a place called Taured. If you've never heard of this country, then don't worry, you're not alone. That's because it doesn't actually exist and it's a fictional country that is in between the borders of France and Spain. The man's passport was visa stamped and he even provided a bank statement from the Tau Red Bank. His documents were taken and held in airport security while the man was left in a guarded hotel room waiting for police to arrive. But when they got there, the man was gone. People believe that this man was a visitor from a parallel universe where European history was different and led to the creation of the country of Taurus. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is the mecca when it comes to mysterious disappearances and rumors and urban legends, so of course it had to make it onto this list. The Triangle, which sits in between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, earned its deadly reputation starting back in the 1970s. Since then, there has been about 80 aircrafts and 60 boats that have gone missing in the triangle, which only fueled rumors that there was some sort of force or supernatural cause that was making this area one where people would often go missing. There have been intense electrical forces and tunnel-like clouds reported in the triangle, which some believe is the cause for the disappearances, some others believe it's weather patterns, some believe it's the entrance to a parallel universe or a place where aliens like to abduct their victims, and some people like to dismiss the idea that there's any sort of mystery at all. At this point, exactly what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Oregon Vortex. Just off of Interstate 5 in Southern Oregon lies what is called the Oregon Vortex. According to local legend, it is said that this area and the strange and mysterious stories surrounding it aren't just modern legends, but that perhaps it stems back further. People have said that the stories of the Oregon Vortex actually stem back to when indigenous Americans referred to it as the Forbidden Land. It is said that during these times, people traveling on horse Horses would often find that their horses would be refusing to go into the area, so clearly something strange was going on in there that was spooking the animals. Scientists have speculated that the land might contain some kind of crossed magnetic lines that produce some sort of force field, but whatever it really is, the place is truly strange. Things appear very differently here. It's sort of like an optical illusion. The area is basically a parallel universe in itself. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point in our ocean, around 10,900 meters deep. It is located in the Pacific Ocean in the southern part of the Mariana Trench, and because of its location, lack of light, and immense pressure, it hasn't been explored very much. The extreme environment has certainly set up for there to be a whole host of species that we know absolutely nothing about, but it is not an area that can be easily explored by humans. The Challenger Deep has only been visited four times, and only for short periods of time, so there is so much more that is waiting to be uncovered at this deep, dark part of our ocean, and I don't know about you, but I feel like there are insane amounts of ocean creatures that could fully be aliens. They are so strange and interesting and unique, so who in the world knows what really lurks down there? In our number 7 spot today, we have Point Nemo. I'm sure there's a few of us out there who dream of time alone, away from other people, and Point Nemo is exactly that. It's like a parallel universe where if you were to visit, you'd feel like you were the only person on Earth. This is the most remote location on Earth. It's officially known is the oceanic hole of inaccessibility because it is the furthest point away from land. This area is surrounded by more than a thousand miles of ocean in every direction. There are obviously no humans who live even close to Point Nemo, which is why it is called that in the first place, Nemo being Latin for no one. This location is so isolated that the closest people to Nemo aren't even on this earth. Since the inhabited areas closest to the point is over a thousand miles away, the humans aboard the ISS are way closer than anyone on land. Truly just one wild. Kind of sounds like a dream, kind of sounds like a nightmare. In our number 6 spot today, we have Kawa Ijen. Located in Indonesia, this is one of the most remarkable and interesting places on Earth. Firstly, this active volcano emits hot, flammable sulfurous gases. These gases ignite as they enter the oxygen-rich atmosphere of Earth, and this causes them to burn with a stunning blue flame. Further scientific processes also allows for there to be a flow of molten sulfur that also has that same striking blue flame. At night is really when you get quite a show from this coloring, as it quite literally looks like a flow of blue lava. The other incredible thing about this location is that there is a one kilometer wide caldera that is filled with turquoise blue water. The watercolor, while it looks gorgeous, is a result of extreme acidity, as well as a high concentration of dissolved metals. It is an astonishing place to look at, and really is quite magnificent. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Devil's Kettle. This area is said to hold one of Minnesota's greatest mysteries. As the Brule River flows through in order to make its way toward Lake Superior, 
Superior, there is a point where it makes an 800 foot drop in 8 miles. Because of this journey, through time, waterfalls have been created as the water erodes the rocky terrain. One waterfall in particular is the one that we want to talk about today. The stream splits into two as it falls over the edge. One of the two streams flows exactly how you would think it does, while the other is a little more mysterious. On this side, the water rushes into a cavern that seems to go nowhere. The cavern never fills up somehow, but no one can figure out where the water is going. It's a strange phenomena that has resulted in the fall gaining the nickname the Devil's Kettle. It is said that people have tried to place things in the water that might help show them where the water is flowing to, but despite these efforts, the items were just never seen again. In our number four spot today, we have the Pyramids of Giza. One of the most mysterious places on earth has to be the Pyramids of Giza. I mean, how? For centuries, people have wondered and tried to find answers as to how they were built at all, let alone with limited resources and without the use of modern technology. And they've been around for the last 4,000 years, so the durability alone is outstanding. This alone is the source of much mystery, but that's only the outside of them. What lies on the inside might just be even more so. The pyramids of Giza, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, were believed to have been built as tombs for rulers and other wealthy people. That totally makes sense, except for the fact that there hasn't been any mummies found inside of them. Instead, there is just a plethora of secret, unexplored rooms, hidden doors and mirrors, you know, just regular ancient Egypt stuff. Many of these secret rooms remain completely unexplored over fear of damage. One more strange thing about these incredible creations, before we move on though, they were built on the center of the earth. However they did this, they aligned them perfectly with Orion's belt, with no technology, just pure brilliance. I'm just saying, if any Anywhere is going to take you to a parallel universe, these pyramids will take you back in time to a completely different world. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Crooked Forest. Forests are already creepy. This one looks like it's straight out of a Tim Burton film. The Crooked Forest in Poland. There's around 400 odd shaped pine trees near the town Grafino. These trees are about 90 years old, and all of them, from the base, they immediately bend towards the north and then slowly curve back towards the sky like the other trees. Despite the odd bend, these trees are otherwise healthy. There's been so many theories, but none of them really stick. Some suggest it was a gravitational anomaly, but that's a little too far-fetched for me. I don't know. This is an interstellar, right? Other theories claim that there were heavy snowfalls that would weigh down the branches, which could check out, but why is it just a select amount? I've also lived in Canada my entire life. We have lots of snow, and I've never seen a sleepy hollow tree before. My favorite theory is that farmers were trying to make the tree curved on purpose to make stronger wheels, because the grain direction would make for naturally curved wheels. Again though, nobody knows for sure. What are your thoughts? Do we like the wheel theory? I'm just gonna keep a spare tree tire just in case. Keep it stored safely in the trunk. Okay, jokes. I'm funny. Ah. In our number two spot today, we have the Catatumbo River. Basically, in western Venezuela, right over the Catatumbo River, there are these insane, intense lightning storms, and it's a complete atmospheric phenomenon. This lightning occurs 140 to 160 nights a year, 9 hours per day, and from 16 to 40 times per minute. That is absolutely insane. That is so much lightning. Another thing that's so fascinating about this lightning is that it is colorful, and it doesn't produce any thunder. The lightning does change its frequency up from time to time, and at one point it stopped for a few weeks and people thought that maybe it was going to have been exhausted forever, but that changed when the lightning came back, putting it right back on our list of mysteries that we just can't quite figure out. Many people have studied the lightning, trying to figure out how exactly it has been created and what makes this phenomena what it is, but we just aren't quite sure yet. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the reverse waterfall. This mysterious and strange location is another one that comes from India. Here, there is a waterfall, but it's got a catch. While we all, of course, expect to see water cascading down, when we think of a waterfall, this strange location instead sees the water moving towards the sky. Some people believe it's because of some anti-gravitational force, others think it's due to the heavy air pressure, and I'm not a scientist, so I'll let you decide. While this is certainly quite a strange place, it also definitely delivers when it comes to beauty. I think even if the water flowed down like a normal waterfall, this area would still see a lot of tourists just because of the immense natural beauty. Mm -hmm. 